the testicular parenchyma may suffer vascular insult in one of two ways. It may undergo torsion, in such case the whole testis is involved. Or patient may suffer from focal infarction. Testicular torsion occurs in those men who have a bell clapper deformity. In that deformity, the bare area, where the testis is supposed to be anchored to the wall of the scrotum, is narrow or small, allowing the testis to swing on stock and obstructing its blood flow. The salvage rate after testicular torsion is related to the time since the beginning of the torsion. If the torsion is discovered and operated on in less than six hours, the salvageability of the testis is excellent. From 6 to 24 hours, the salvageability declines. And after 24 hours, the salvageability of the testicle is poor. This is a patient who has a bell clapper deformity. You can see that there is a small hydrocele that is fluid in the scrotum around the testis, allowing us to see the entire bare area for this testis as the yellow arrow are pointing. You can see it is relatively narrow and this is the only attachment of the testis to the scrotal wall. So, this could twist on itself particularly in the presence of this hydrocele. With testicular torsion, we see absent or decreased blood flow in the affected testis. And we may or may not see the twisted cord. So, here is a patient who has acute testicular torsion. You can see that the right testis is slightly hypoechoic compared to the left one, and with color Doppler, there is no flow inside this testis. It is important when looking for blood flow inside the testis to optimize this color scale for very slow flow, which is here optimized to 2 cm per second, and still we can identify there is no flow on the right testis. And there is a good flow on the left testis. After four hours, the testis becomes enlarged and edematous. It may have decreased echogenicity. And the echo texture may become heterogeneous. And still have no blood flow inside the testis. We also may see thickening of the epididymis, or the knot of the twisted cord with the epididymis. And a hydrocele may develop after four hours. So, this patient has acute torsion. Here we can see the right testis is enlarged than the left testis. We can see blood flow inside the left testis, and no blood flow in the right testis. Also notice that the right testis has heterogeneous echo texture, and slightly hypoechoic than the left. And it is increased in size compared to the left. After 24 hours, we have what is called mistorsion. The torsion have blocked the blood flow to the testis for more than a day. An ultrasound will still see no flow inside the testis, but we may now see thickening of the scrotal wall and increased blood flow in the scrotal wall. The changes in the testis will continue. It may be enlarged and edematous. It may be hypoechoic and heterogeneous. The epididymis will be still thickened. And a hydrocele is likely to be present. So here is a patient with a mistorsion. Notice the normal left testis with normal vascularity. The right testis is hypoechoic and heterogeneous. And there is thickening of the scrotal wall as well as increased blood flow in the scrotal wall. But no blood flow inside the testicle. Occasionally patients suffer focal infarction. Nobody knows exactly how it occurs, but it tends to occur in older patients. And this patient presents with acute pain. And what we will see is either a wedge-shaped hypoechoic area at the periphery of the testis. Or we might see complex intratesticular mass. This mass may be indistinguishable from tumors. So here is a patient who has an infarction. This patient presented with pain. 
We see a focal lesion at the upper pole of the testis with well-defined margins. It looks like a mass. The only thing about this mass is that it does not have any blood flow with the testicular parenchyma does. This is still concerning for a malignancy, and they did remove it, and pathology showed focal infarction. Okay, let's move on to discuss other stuff. This will include testicular trauma, cystic lesions, testicular microlithiasis, varicocele, hydrocele, testicular atrophy, and finally testicular sarcoidosis. Because of the scrotal location, it is at risk of direct trauma. After trauma, a hematoma may be found in the scrotum, it may be in the epididymis, it may be in the scrotal wall, or it may follow hematocele. In addition the testicle may be damaged forming a contusion or a rupture. Sometimes the testis get involved, and we need to look at the testis carefully after trauma. With the contusion we have a hypoechoic, or anechoic lesions that have poorly defined margins. As you can see in this case, there is multiple ill-defined hypoechoic parenchymal lesions, consistent with multiple contusions. This patient has multiple testicular contusions. Contusions can look like intratesticular masses and can raise concern for malignancy. Here we have ill-defined hypoechoic lesions, it is heterogeneous. Because this may be confusing with tumor, this may sometimes come to resection. Also remember as we said before, that 10% of testicular tumors present with a history of trauma. However, in cases of trauma, close follow-up may be recommended. Fortunately with contusions they do get better, and quickly they get smaller in size. And as you can see this patient who was followed monthly. And you can see by three months, the contusions are almost invisible now on ultrasound, and become very smaller in size and resolved. With testicular fracture, you have a hypoechoic band across the testis, as in this case. The testis here is heterogeneous, with hypoechoic line creating a parenchymal discontinuity. This hypoechoic line representing testicular fracture. With testicular rupture, there is disruption of the capsule of the testis. Here is a diagram shows what happens in a testicular rupture. You can see there is a tear in the tunica albuginea, and some of the parenchyma is extruded through the defect in the tunica albuginea. It is very common also to have hematoma associated with this. These are two patients with testicular rupture. We can see that there is disruption of the tunica albuginea, as the yellow arrows are pointing. We can also see there is multiple ill-defined hypoechoic parenchymal contusions in patients with testicular trauma. So here is a patient with acute hematoma. The scrotum was enlarged after trauma. We see this collection in the lower portion of the scrotum. Blood collection in the tunica vaginalis is called hematocele. It is anechoic or shows low-level echoes in acute stage as in this case. Resolving or chronic hematocele has a typical web-shaped septations, as you can see in this case. Moving on to discuss the cystic lesions. The lesions we will discuss are testicular cysts, epidermoid cyst, tubular ectasia of the reedy testis, epididymal cysts, and spermatocell. Intratestecular cysts are uncommon but can be seen. Simple testicular cysts are asymptomatic and discovered incidentally on ultrasound. These cysts are benign lesions and commonly found in men over 40 years of age. They range in size from 2 mm to 2 cm and can be very large and replace most of the testis. Most of the intratestecular cysts are non-palpable. That is opposed to the tunical cysts, which are on the surface of the testis, which can be small but still palpable. On ultrasound, these are rounded, 
or oval anechoic structures with posterior acoustic enhancement. Most of the cysts are located near the mediastinum testis and are unilocular. No internal vascularity on color Doppler interrogation. Epidermoid cyst is a benign cyst. Its size range from 1 to 3 centimeters. On ultrasound it has an echogenic rim and showing onion skin or target appearance due to layers of keratin. No flow on color Doppler examination. In tubular ectasia of the reedy testis, you have some sort of obstruction to flow of spermatozoa. You get reflux into the reedy testis. Typically, it affects men over the age of 55. On ultrasound, it appear as tiny tubular cystic spaces along the mediastinum. It should not have any mass effect or any flow on color Doppler examination. Associated spermatocell or epididymal cyst is common. Epididymal cyst and spermatocell. Epididymal cysts are common benign cystic lesions of the epididymis. Patients present with complaints of painless, palpable mass in the scrotum. Larger cysts usually cause discomfort and pain. However, in up to one-third of patients, epididymal cysts are asymptomatic and found incidentally. The terms epididymal cyst and spermatocell are often used interchangeably to describe the same structure. Epididymal cysts contain serous fluid and do not contain sperm. While spermatocells contain non-viable spermatozoa and debris, and are typically seen after puberty. On ultrasound, epididymal cyst is anechoic rounded or oval structure with no internal echoes. It shows posterior acoustic enhancement. It may be solitary or multiple. Larger cysts may contain septations and may mimic hydrocele. It is located at any part in the epididymis. Spermatoceles at ultrasound are similar to epididymal cysts. However, they show internal echoes and located almost always in the epididymal head. Beside looking at masses inside the testis, we look at testis for other reasons including to evaluate the testicular parenchyma. And one thing you might see is microlithiasis. Microlithiasis are tiny little calcifications scattered throughout the testicular parenchyma. The prevalence is about 9% with current ultrasound technology, which have been improved. The risk of malignant tumors in patients with microlithiasis is 8 times higher than those without microlithiasis. And typically the tumors are more often germ cell tumors and more often pure seminomas. So here is a patient with microlithiasis, you can see on this longitudinal view that the testicle is filled with these tiny little bright echoes throughout the parenchyma. The number of microliths detected on imaging may vary considerably. The condition has been graded as grade 1 if you have 5 to 10 microliths. Grade 2 if you have 10 to 20 microliths. And grade 3 if you have more than 20 microliths, depending on the count of microcalcifications seen in any single view. This patient has microlithiasis but developed germ cell tumor. You can see the tumor is centrally located inside the testis. It is hypoechoic mass, but notice the testicular parenchyma has microlithiasis. Also notice the increased vascularity associated with the tumor. So, if microlithiasis is encountered on ultrasound, what do you recommend to the patient? Most stuff recommended that patients do self-examination to assess for the development of the tumor. Because also these tumors are eight times more common in patients with microlithiasis than in those without, the risk of cancer still low. A few have recommended annual physical examination an annual ultrasound examination. And if the patient have a prior history of a testicular tumor, 
cryptorchidism, or subfertility, those patients should have closer surveillance than just self-examination. Let's move on and discuss another pathology. Varicocele is an abnormal dilatation and tortuosity of pampiniform plexus of veins. This common condition is associated with testicular discomfort and may affect male fertility. The etiology of varicocele is complex, however dilatation and incompetency of the testicular vein with reflux of blood down into the pampiniform plexus is presumed to cause varicocele formation. Varicoceles are more common on the left side, with up to 80% of the men with varicocele have a bilateral affection. Isolated right testicular varicocele is rare and should raise concern for variant anatomies like situs inversus or intraabdominal pathology such as a retroperitoneal mass. The normal diameter of pampiniform plexus veins is less than 1.5 millimeters. On ultrasound varicocele are dilated hypoechoic veins greater than 2 millimeters in diameter with serpiginous appearance. On color Doppler there is reflux of flow with Valsalva maneuver. This is a case of varicocele. As you can see on these images, there is multiple dilated tortuous anechoic veins superior to the testis. The average vein diameter was about 3.5 millimeters. On color Doppler examination there was reflux during Valsalva. Intratestecular varicocele is a rare entity characterized by the dilatation of intratestecular veins usually seen in relation to the mediastinum testis. Intratesticular varicocele typically associated with extratesticular varicocele but may be isolated. There is increased incidence in men who have undergone orchidopexy for undescended testis. As you can see in this case, there is a left-sided extra-testicular varicocele. However, there is also intratestecular tubular-shaped anechoic structures within the mediastinum testis. Color Doppler revealed blood flow during Valsalva. These are intratestecular varicocele. Hydrocele is an abnormal accumulation of serous fluid in the tunica vaginalis. Hydrocele can be diagnosed at any age and may be congenital or acquired. Nearly all hydrocele's in neonates and infants are congenital and are typically associated with patent processes vaginalis. There are two main subtypes of congenital hydrocele. Communicating hydrocele and spermatic cord hydrocele. Acquired hydrocele's may develop due to trauma infection, inflammation, or neoplastic process. Most hydrocele's, however, are idiopathic. On ultrasound, hydrocele is a simple anechoic fluid collection. It may contain septations or internal echoes. It is avascular on Doppler evaluation. In communicating infantile hydrocele, as in this case, you will see fluid intimately surrounding the adjacent testis. In contrast, spermatic cord hydrocele such as funicular and in C. stead, the fluid will not surround the testis, rather being found along the spermatic cord, as in this case. Let's move on and discuss testicular atrophy. Testicular atrophy is a pathologic process involving total or partial wasting of the previously normal testis. The condition is characterized by the diminished size of the affected testis with complete or partial function loss. Multiple conditions may be responsible for testicular atrophy. These conditions include testicular ischemia, testicular trauma, infection and inflammation, varicocele, anabolic steroids, radiation exposure, and congenital disorders such as Klinefelter syndrome. Pain is a common sign of testicular atrophy. The criteria for diagnosis of testicular atrophy are a volume of less than 12 milliliters or a volume reduction of 2 milliliters 
compared with the contralateral healthy testis. On ultrasound, the atrophic testis often has a heterogeneous hypoechoic echo texture and appears noticeably smaller than the contralateral side. Lastly, testicular sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis is a rare chronic multisystemic disorder. It is characterized by the formation of lesions in multiple organs of the body. Although any organ can be affected by sarcoidosis, the most frequently involved sites are the lungs, the skin, and the eyes. Testicular involvement is sporadic and is most often accompanied by the epididymal infiltration. The peak incidence between the second and fourth decades of life. Men with testicular sarcoidosis may present with painless palpable mass or masses. On ultrasound, the typical presentation is multiple bilateral hypoechoic lesions, with or without epididymal involvement. When epididymis is involved, it may appear heterogeneous and enlarged. Sonographically, testicular sarcoidosis may mimic malignancy, leading to misdiagnosis. It is crucial to identify and correctly diagnose the condition to avoid unnecessary orchiectomy. Thank you very much for your attention.